Let's bring in Dan Levitard, who has his own uh, national radio show. Dan Levitard is highly questionable. I didn't think of you first after the LeBron James announcement. I thought of you second. I thought of John Calipari first that he turned down the, <laughs> the Cleveland Cavaliers job. Uh, how did you find out? Um, oh, I found out the way that everyone else did. Um, I found out just listening on the radio. I just feel, Dan, like so much of this could have been avoided if he had just done a one-hour television show on ESPN. <laughs> Did he do it opposite because of what happened the last time around? Oh, I'll tell you this, Dan. Like, this was a master stroke as a PR move. Just a tremendous PR move. And I would say it's more of a PR move than it is a basketball move. Although you can make the arguments for Cleveland's young roster, he's going to be headed into the playoffs in all likelihood with a lot of guys who have never played a playoff game mm -hmm. before. Um, but it was a perfect PR move. Go home. I, th I found it interesting that Chris Sheridan, the guy who broke this story, when he broke it, that he was talking in sports writer narrative, that he was talking in the mythology of going home and the Rust Belt. I found that interesting because I didn't think that could be right, that a sports writer and an athlete would both have the sports writer narrative. But, man, these guys plan that part out beautifully, so it doesn't become about the way that his entourage feuded with Pat Riley at the end. When do you think he made up his mind? Oh, it was before the end. I don't think he does what he did. I don't think he does that again to Cleveland. You know what I mean? Allows 10 days of hope uh, where he does it again to Cleveland uh, and, and crushes Cleveland again. I think he knew before this. And it's, you know, the Miami Heat have taken the high road on this. But it's why the Miami Heat were behaving uh, like a team that was going to get him because, you know, they were misled by his guys. What do you mean? I mean, the Miami Heat were behaving like a team that was going to get him back. They were doing everything like they were going to get him back. And so that, and that's because the agent uh, for LeBron James made them feel like they were going to get him back. You can't have two teams behaving like they were going to get him back. <laughs> I go back to that press conference, and I told you I didn't like what Pat Riley did. I know he does his – you know, the state of the uh, Miami Heat uh, address, I don't know if it had any effect, but I really think he's he sent to, said to LeBron, hey, don't be, you know, don't wimp out here. Don't leave. Don't, you know, this is when great ones come back. I think LeBron was saying, oh, no, 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 this is on you, Riles. You guys spent less. We win a championship. You don't go over the luxury tax. Look at the guys you give me here. I got the fife and drum bugle corps out there, and you want me to go into battle for the next four years? No, it's the onus is on you. So I thought it, I thought it was a return volley there to Pat Riley. Well, there were swings and misses. I mean, Pat Riley tried to get younger and failed with Greg Oden and Michael Beasley and, you know, the old guys. You never know you're too old until it's too late, right? Because they weren't too old the year before when Dwayne Wade and Ray Allen helped LeBron James win the title the year before. Uh, you know, and Shane Battier didn't look too old in Game 7 last time, you know, and he couldn't play in these finals. And Riley Tent has a way of running those things into the ground. But I would say to anyone who's criticizing Riley, and there are plenty of people doing it and plenty of people looking at that press conference and saying, whoa, that was way too defiant, uh, you know, throwing around the world the word that you have guts and stuff. Anyone yeah. complaining about that, Dan, though, I would say he ran into the arms of Dan Gilbert. Like, <laughs> that's it, 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 whatever Pat Riley did, it was not a fraction of what, where it is that, that LeBron ended up. No matter how mad he was from the, from the Pat Riley yeah. press conference, it, it has to pale compared to where he ended up. Like, if you give me that with any other owner, fine, but where he ended up was only a million times worse than what Pat Riley did. And you had the right approach, which is no surprise. You just said, look, it, treasure those four years. I, I thought that, you know, Miami fans didn't even deserve that. He gave you a gift. He went there. He played. He chased championships because we, the media, made him chase championships. And then I think he woke up one day and said, now what? I, I may be stuck with the Cavaliers of South Beach here. I, I, you know, I can go to a younger team, go home again. The only place he could go to without getting, I mean, he's still getting criticized because he's LeBron, but now, now he gets to go home. There's a little bit of a feel-good story instead of I'm taking my talents. So I, I, I thought it was a brilliant business decision, and he's a billion-dollar brand when this is all said and done.
Well, I don't know how you rank it in terms of whether basketball decision, business decision, PR decision. I'd put at the top PR decision because what he did, the way he flipped this, Dan, is kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he came to Miami and left his situation there so he could rent his championships and not be the guy who was that great and never won one, and now he's got a couple and he can go back there. And the way we were going to play it for years in Miami, he, it was championship or bust every year in Miami yeah. for the rest of his life. And he wrote in that letter, I just want one for Cleveland, just one. Like, I'm telling you, it's a PR masterstroke, and I get if people in Miami are upset, but the mistress is always upset when the dude goes back <laughs> to his wife. I also looked at this situation. If I'm a Miami Heat fan, okay, we lost LeBron. Now what do we have? I got Wade, and I don't even know what I got there. And you guys are stuck with that Chris Bosh deal, Dan. Oh, man, I don't look at it that way. I think Chris Bosh uh, is going to be a much better player without LeBron with as a focal point. You, you have <laughs> Danny, he better, he better be he better be freaking awesome for that amount but of money. Was, but, but he was really good before he got here. Look, I'm not. I'm yes, not, that's it's, true. It's, it's not the same thing, okay? They basically traded LeBron James for Luol Deng. That's not a good trade. I'm no. not going to sit here and argue that the Miami Heat are in a better, better position uh, or even close to as good a position because they're not going to be playing for championships every year but that's that's a playoff team in the east and it's i don't think it's a low seed either like i think who's better though cleveland or miami see that's a good question to me to me you're going to find out this year um something interesting between those two because i do think they're going to be competing to be better this year like i think cleveland and miami are both going to be trying to be better than the other there's still pieces to be there's there's still pieces to be made here but that's why it makes it hard to make it a basketball argument right because does does anyone I, i know lebron is great there's no arguing that lebron is great but as you look at that team right now and he's still going to have trouble getting free agents there um and he's certainly not going to get free agents to go there at a discount. Um, when you look at it, how good is Cleveland? Do you look at them and say the Cleveland Cavaliers now could beat the San Antonio Spurs? Who has more wins next season, Miami or Cleveland? Um, I mean, if if Cleveland gets Kevin Love, Cleveland will have more wins. Let's say if, they stay. The rosters stay the same. And then I'd put it about the same: fifty wins for both of them. <laughs> You want, what do you want me to do? You want me to go out on a limb? Okay, Cleveland. I'll uh, say Cleveland. There I mean, you go. It makes it right. a better story. You know, it makes uh, it for a better story. Well, it's already a better story. Yeah. Like, it's all, <laughs> this whole thing is a really, really cool story. But, but we, we want change. As members of the media, we, people were hoping, like, Melo goes back to New York, nobody cares. You know, Pau Gasol going to Chicago probably gets more attention than Melo going back. Okay, went back to New York. LeBron going to Cleveland turns the sports media, the media itself, on its ear. I mean, it's just one of those mind-boggling, let's analyze it from 87 different angles here, from business to PR to, oh, by the way, basketball. Just fascinating. But if you had one question right now for LeBron James, that question would be what? I'd like to know when he made this decision because – I feel like it was a long time ago. I do too. I, I I think I think it was. I go back to when his wife talked about home, and it was so like oh you know oh yeah she's you know going back home or you know home sweet home, and I and that was the first time I went okay, yeah because we all tried to read the tea leaves you know Kyrie Irving resigning and they got wig and you know is this something LeBron would. And then they didn't get Calipari or Mark Jackson. They got Dave Blatt. And I thought, okay, maybe they're not getting him. But, you know, there, there had to be a moment where he just had an epiphany and said, and I thought it was during the NBA Finals, believe it or not. I do. Oh, no, I think it was before that. Now, mm-hmm. here's part of the problem, really? though, Dan. Like, I, it's hard for me to know what's true and what isn't because so many people are talking about so many different things. But one thing that really surprised me that I've heard in a number of places is that LeBron's wife and LeBron's mom didn't want to actually go. Um, that when he was talking about going back and telling Pat Riley that he needed to talk to his family, he was talking about La Familia. <laughs> he was talking about the, the, the group of guys around him. Like, I, I, I mean, I've, again, I don't know what to believe. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I need to talk to LeBron about it and get honesty from LeBron about it. And I'm not sure those things are possible, given that they, the way they're spinning this in a PR way. But I'm actually not – I'm not – I mean, I've heard in too many places. Uh, it's not one or two. Uh, 
that uh, Savannah didn't actually want to go. What is the music playing behind you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm using a house phone here in the building I live in because you guys, my phone lines have been so bad when I call you guys that I've got to use a landline. So, um, is, is that Muzak? I, no, I think is that is Enya? Like some, no, I think this is some sort of clock. I think it's some sort of house music with mixed with Yanni. I'm sorry, I, didn't even know that I couldn't hear. <laughs> it's very it's soothing. Music. I feel like I should be walking around in a towel waiting for a massage. <laughs> uh, I right now I'm wearing nothing but a silk robe and uh, rabbit slippers, slippers with rabbits on them. Does Brian Windhorse get to go back to Cleveland? Um. thought of people you thought first of of john calipari yes. second of me second the third of windhorse yes that's the way you did this yes yeah i got issues um, too i got issues no windhorse is growing his brand i think windhorse is going to do a lot of basketball stuff not just lebron uh but i would say in, in keeping with what you said about people wanting change uh with their with their teams i would say one of the things that lebron has done that people are celebrating here is he's uh, blown open the league in a way that makes you feel more teams have a chance. Yeah. They want change, but they didn't like that change in 2010 so much. No. Like that, that didn't seem to be the kind of change they wanted. It's great to talk to you. I don't know when we'll talk again, Dan, but <laughs> you're running me out of your life. Yeah, probably. You know, yeah. maybe something happens with the Dolphins. I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, thank you. Thanks for uh, joining us and uh, get some clothes on. Yeah, all right. I, I'm going to take more off. <laughs> thank you, Dan. That's uh, Dan Levitar in his robe and his slippers.